Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. <laughs> Jennings, this is Lieutenant Guthrie. Now, how do you do, Mrs. Jennings? Hello, Lieutenant. I'll see you later then, Ben. Yeah. Oh, uh... oh d- don't worry. I'll, I'll drive you back home when you're finished. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you, Sergeant. I hope I can be of some help, Lieutenant. He's been so nice to me. He drove me over on the ferry instead of the bridge. I told him I'd like to see ships up close. <laughs> well, so do I. Uh, Mrs. Jennings, our man probably won't be any of these, but we have to cover every possibility. Of course, Lieutenant. How is that poor girl? Oh, about the same. Oh, such a terrible thing. Is he a criminal? <laughs> None of the suspects are down here, Mrs. Jennings. They'll all be up on the stage. That's Captain Devereaux and the Codex Squad. Oh, you'll be glad to have <laughs> all right, Mrs. Jennings. in the audience room. May I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then even charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner, as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. Bring on the line. Sergeant looks like a nice man. Is All right, boys, Graham? come on. Oh, yes. Family man? Yes. I thought so. That's right, all the way down. Now turn and face front, hands to your sides, and look straight ahead. Now don't be afraid to talk right up so the people in the back of the room can hear you. All right, number one, Roswell Brennan, robbery. Where do you live, Roswell? Here. Here, on this stage of the county jail in town? Where? In town, I don't know the address. I just moved in yesterday. Got picked up before I get settled. Turn each side. Can you people hear him back there? Oh, yeah. All right, a little louder, Roswell. Now, where did you live before you moved to the east side of town yesterday? Yeah. Come on, speak up. Here, here in town, right here in this stinking town. Where? I lived at the White Hotel for a while. And before that? I lived out of town. You married? Not anymore. Ever served time? You heard the question? Yeah. Well, when, where, what for? It was a couple of years ago. I did nine months in the county jail in Cheyenne, Wyoming, for robbery. Okay. Number two, Frank Sundell, disturbing the peace. Where do you live, Frank? 532 Logan Street. Is that your permanent residence? Permanent as any. Been there almost three months now. According to the report, you threw a brick at a laundry truck and smashed the windshield. Well, they wouldn't make good on the three shirts of mine they ruined. I don't take that lying down. It's a felony to throw a missile at a moving vehicle. Did you know that? I told you that criminal laundry wouldn't make good on them shirts of mine. The driver was pretty badly cut up. He's in the hospital. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, well, they should have paid me. They did pay you something. Oh, sure, yeah, five bucks. Well, if you weren't satisfied with that settlement, you should have gone to the small claims court. I've been out of work for six months. I can't afford no lawyer. No lawyers are allowed in small claims court. You plead your own case. Now you'll have to get a lawyer, Frank. <clears throat> All right, number three, Jules Caravello, assault. What's your line of work, Jules? Cook. Don't look at me. Look right out front so the people can see you. Where do you cook? In a restaurant downtown. What restaurant? Uh, the one where it happened. What restaurant? All restaurants have names. Tell us which one you work at. Oh, you got it on your books. My brother-in-law owns the place. Your brother-in-law's name, Angelo Capelli? Yeah. You went after him with a meat cleaver last night. Well, I was upset. I didn't feel good. All right, Jules. All right. Number four, John Smith. Hi. Hi. Oh. Is there anything the matter? Mm, just tired again. 
I keep telling you to try a massage, Ben. Those guys... Not me. Well, then let Quine... No, thanks. Now, look, I, I'll, let, I'll let him do it to me, see, and show you how easy it is. Yeah. Mrs. Jennings spot anyone? No. She's coming back tomorrow and try again. Well, it's too bad she didn't get the license number of the car. Only just passed a window and parked out of a range of vision. She thinks it was a 50 Buick. It was dark out last night. No mm, moon. She has a, a face pretty clear in her mind. She... Says he wasn't two feet from a window when he walked back to his car. And besides, there's a street light on a corner, and that helps. Yeah. How's Asher doing? Any identification on our Jane Doe yet? Well, he's looking under the clothes labels and laundry marks. Put her prints on the wire. Well, maybe she'll regain consciousness long enough to tell us who she is. And Dr. Gordon said he'd let me know if there was any change. She was sure shot up. Ash is checking on that coat she was wearing. You should get something. It was expensive. Mink. You know, Molly says she could never stand to wear a mink. Oh, uh, man, man. Uh, oh, fine, fine. Just the guy I want to see. Ben needs a neck job. Yeah? No, I didn't say I did. Now, didn't. look, Ben, look. He can take your head and twist it just right so your neck cracks. Relax it in half a second. Go ahead, Quine. Go ahead, Sean. Uh, uh, you don't show me. What's the matter? You scared? <laughs> come on, Quine. Come on, come on. Do it to me. Show him. Okay, sit, sit over here, man. All right. All right sit down and, and relax. I'm relaxed. Yeah, relax, man. That's it. That's yeah. it. Now, relax now. All right. Uh, yeah. How's that? Oh, great. See? Now the other way. Watch this, Ben. I'm watching. Uh, you, you see, you got to get a hold of him just right, Ben. Uh, it's the leverage. Now, relax, Matt. Uh, it's just loose enough. Now, hold it. I tell yeah. you, Ben, this is exactly what you should do. You, you feel better right away. Oh, still, wait a minute. Oh, sorry. All right. Yeah. I got to get you set just right. Oh. Now, it's important to you. Yeah. The big secret is, is to relax. Guthrie. To relax all yeah. over. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Let oh, me take that, that down. Good. Real good. 30, on, 41 no, Albion Street. Way, yeah. Yeah, like okay. That. There we are. Yeah. Hey, come on. Let him do it to you, Ben. I tell you, it makes you feel 10 years younger in 10 seconds. Does it really work? Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, well, what do you say, Ben? Well, uh, maybe later. Uh, that was Asher. Huh? He came up with an identification on our Jane Doe. She worked in a defense plant for a while. Prince were on file with the Bureau. Her name's Lorraine Oberhauser. Ash is over to apartment now. Uh, okay. Ben, yeah. Uh, uh, I want to think about it. Come on, man. Oh, Asher. Oh, hi. Hi. We haven't picked up much here yet. No family? Nothing. Not even a letter. But Crockett should get something at the defense plant. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, the apartment house manager, Clarence Dillon, is waiting to talk to you. Oh, sure. Uh, in here. Right. Uh, Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Grab, Miss Dillon. Hello, Miss Dillon. Hello. Hello. I couldn't believe it when they told me about poor Lorraine. I, I still can't believe it. Uh, was she a friend of yours, Miss Dillon? When she quit her job three months ago, we, we sort of got acquainted. We'd have coffee together late in the morning. She ever speak to you about her family? Never. Although I, I think she was married once. What about her friends? I never met any of them. Uh, what about the man who drove the Buick? He used to come by and pick her up, didn't he? Oh. You know about Claude. Claude who? Why, well, I, I never met him. She, she just called him Claude when she talked about him. Uh, what would she say about Claude? Well, you know, I have to meet him or I'm going to see him tonight. A mm -hmm. few times I saw him in the hall. Oh, what did he look like? Tall, sort of getting bald. Uh, how old? Well, maybe 40. How old's Lorraine? 25. She had a birthday a week ago. She have a party? Sort of. Didn't Claude come? No. It, it was just Lorraine and myself. We had a drink or two and then went out to dinner and a movie. Uh, did Claude come by here last night? I couldn't say. I was out last night. He does drive a Buick? Yes. What kind? Uh, Riviera. Blue. Trimmed in black. Do you know where we can get hold of him? Oh, heavens, no. Well, did Lorraine ever mention what kind of work he does? No. Well, how'd he strike you the few times you saw him? Quiet man. Very quiet. Have money? Seemed to. Did he buy Lorraine that fur coat? I suppose so. He bought her a lot of things. Hmm. Uh, where's your apartment? Across the hall. Did you ever hear them arguing? No, I... I don't think they saw enough of each other to argue. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, he only saw her once or twice a week, always during the week, too. They hardly ever went out. But Claude had money. Seemed to, yes. 
Lorraine pays all her bills on time, does she? Her rent? Oh, yes, always. But she hasn't been working for three weeks. Do you think Claude was helping her out? Uh, I don't know. Is Claude a married man? Yes. Uh, get that, Asher. Right, sir. Now, those times you had coffee with Lorraine, she ever asked your advice? No. Never mentioned she was in love with a married man? Just once. She was unhappy about it. She didn't like it. Claude's wife wouldn't give him a divorce. Uh-huh. Anything else? Well, she said she knew she'd have to break it off. It was no good. Uh, when did she tell you then? Yesterday morning. Uh, this picture was found in one of the drawers, Miss Dillon. Do you uh, recognize this man? Well? That's him. That's Claude. Ninety-eight, a three ninety W at Crossroads and Fifth. Uh, how do you feel? Drugstore oh, manager same. holding her for you. Oh, you should have let Quine fix you up. No, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yes, you are. Well, I am. Thirteen J, make a ten twenty one. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah. Thirteen J, make a ten twenty one. Thirteen J, Roger. We can phone from this restaurant. Where's the telephone, miss? Around the side. I'll do it, Ben. No, I want to make another call, too. Got some nickels? Yeah. Uh, order me some coffee. Okay. Two coffees. Black. Sure. Sandwich or something? Uh, let me see the menu. It's up there. Oh. Mm, I guess not. Good pie. Oh? What kind? Apple, huckleberry, boysenberry, black bottom. I'll try the black bottom. <laughs> Good, huh? Yeah, it's swell. Where do you buy your pies? Oh, lady, just pedal to a certain places around town. Well, it's sure good. Hey, the other fellow making the call. He a plain clothesman? Mm-hmm. I had a hunch. It doesn't look like one. More like a banker. <laughs> Never can tell. <laughs> you sure can. A napkin? Here you are. What, uh, what was it, Ben? A garden at the hospital. The girl's coming around. How are you, Ben? Oh, fine, Doc. Remember Sergeant Grab? Oh, sure. Hi, Sergeant. Hello, Doctor. Maybe I shouldn't have bothered getting in touch with you. She hasn't died. No, not yet. But she's about two inches away. Hard to do anything with a patient in her condition. She's under oxygen. Oh. Uh, know who she is yet? Her name's Lorraine Oberhauser. The priest? She was wearing a scapular medal. Oh. Excuse us, Father. Ben? Sometimes, just before it comes, they regain consciousness long enough to say a few words. I'm sorry, Ben. Your trip over here was for nothing. Beginning next week, the lineup will move to Thursday evenings. So listen to the lineup Thursday nights over most of these same stations. Also, a week from tonight, plan to help CBS Radio celebrate the return of the great Bing Crosby show, starting another year with Bing songs, music, guests, and merriment. Join us when most of these stations welcome back the Bing Crosby show. <laughs> a surprise. Hello, Mrs. Jennings. Uh, this is Sergeant Graham. Good afternoon. 
Well, come in. Come in. Thank you. Uh, Sergeant Quine didn't come with you? No, no. He's on duty at the precinct station. Oh. Uh, we don't want to take up too much of your time, Mrs. Jennings. We'd uh, just like to have you look at a few pictures. Of course. Oh, uh, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you. Now, uh, you recognize this man? No. This one? No. How about this one? No. This? Mm-mm. This? This? Well, wait. Let me see that one. Yes. That one. I believe that's the man I saw take that poor girl out of his car the other night. Uh-huh. Is that him? Yeah, we're pretty sure. Have you arrested him yet? No. We only know his first name. Oh. How is the girl? She died a couple of hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's about all for now. When we get him, we'll ask you to come downtown again. Will Sergeant Quine come and get me? Mm, possibly. Oh, he's such a nice man. You know, this morning when he came to get me, I told him I didn't feel too well. And he made me feel good just like that. <laughs> well, Quine's quite a kidder. Oh, no, that isn't what I mean. He cracked my neck. It felt wonderful. What? Yes, oh, he's very good at it. <clears throat> so I've heard. <laughs> come on, Sergeant. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Well, you call me? Uh, certainly. Bye. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Jennings. Bye. Goodbye. Well, uh, you're going to see Quine when we get back? Oh, shut up. Yeah. She's got quite a case on you. <laughs> Where's Matt? Uh, uh, down the hall will be along in a minute. 36G, code 7, reported to 7. You still feel bad? Well, about the same. Got a match? Yeah. Okay, here you are. Thanks. Hey, uh, Michigan State takes some Michigan this week. Ought to be a fracas. Yeah. Has State in the conference yet? Well, uh, this year or next, darn if I remember. Mm, they play ball both places. Mm, you said it. Hi, Ben. How did it come out? Uh, Claude's our boy, all right. Whoever and wherever he is. Well, Crockett found out the Hanson girl didn't have a family of any kind, but her ex lives in town. They were married in 46, divorced in 48. Did you pick him up yet? No, I thought I'd leave that up to you and Matt. His name's Claude. Claude Oberhauser. <laughs> Police, did you say? That's right, Mr. Oberhauser. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Grimm. Oh, how do you do? Well, sit down, gentlemen. I'm just getting ready to leave the office. Thanks. <clears throat> well, what is it? Uh, you were once married to a girl named Lorraine Hanson? Oh, yes, once. We've been divorced almost three years now. Is Lorraine in trouble? She was shot to death last night, Mr. Oberhauser. Uh, you sure it's Lorraine? Well, we checked her prints with the FBI. She worked in a defense plant and was on file. Oh, poor kid. The poor mixed-up little kid. Have you been seeing her? Oh, yes, occasionally. We have a drink together. We even talked of trying out marriage again. You married now? Uh, yes, more or less. When did you last see her? Oh, a week or so ago. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Friendly? Oh, yes. We, we were just kids when we got married. We knew we'd made a mistake, and then we separated her. Guess we both grew up a little in the meanwhile. We kind of needed each other. Uh, we'd like to have you come along with us. Huh? Oh, well, all right. Wait a minute. I'll, I'll get my hat. Matt, hmm? tell Asher to take his boys off the front and back entrance. This isn't the right Claude. Feel all right, Mr. Oberhauser? Yes, I'm all right. All right, Charlie. Uh, 
That's the ring. You're positive? That's the ring. I'm positive. Okay. Now, let's go out front. Have you talked to anyone else yet? I'm just a landlady. Uh, what about Claude? Claude? Claude Onright. Uh, sit down, Mr. Oberhauser. Sergeant Grell will be along in a minute. Uh, tell me, is this Claude Onright? Yes. Yes, that is. Well, what can you tell me about him? Oh, just about everything. Yeah? Well, Lorraine's been seeing him for the last year. I knew that, of course. At the same time she's been seeing you? Uh-huh. I checked on him, wanted to see what kind of man he was. I didn't want her to do something foolish, make any rash moves. Uh, did Lorraine know he was married? No. No, not at first. Not, not until I told her. Uh, where can we get in touch with him? Well, I don't remember his address. And I know it isn't in the book, so... Well, what about where he works? Well, I don't know where that is, but I... I've got his address for my... Oh, come on, man. Let's wait outside. My name's Guthrie. Who are you? I'm Tommy Armreich. Oh, uh, is your daddy home? No. Your mother? She hasn't been home for three days. She's out of town. I'm hungry. I don't know why my daddy's so late. He's usually home when I come home from school. Uh, Matt! Matt! Go, Come on around. Who's he? Oh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, we're policemen, Tommy. No, you're not. You don't even have a uniform. <laughs> Maybe saw it in the garage. He tried... Oh... Uh, this is Tommy Arnwright. Oh, uh, hi, Tommy. Uh, take a look around, man. She's out of town. He hasn't been here all afternoon. Right. What's he looking around my house for? Oh, just looking. Mm. I'm sure glad you came. I was getting lonesome. And I'm still hungry. Where's your phone? It's out in the hall. Uh, you stay here, Tommy. I'll be right back. Sergeant Asher, please. Asher, anything new? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we won't take any chances. Now, look, on your way back, uh, stop on a drive-in and pick up a half dozen hamburgers and French fries, huh? Well, just a moment. You like onions, Tommy? Yeah. With, and uh, three malts, too. Right. We wait here for Onright. He didn't pack anything, Ben. Empty suitcases in the closet. Uh, Asher says Onright uh, sold his Buick two hours ago to a used car dealer. Oh, he's getting some money together. Yeah. Let's see if he wants to take the kid with him. Kid know anything? Yeah, he was asleep when the matron took him down to juvenile hall. Oh, it's it's after ten thirty, Ben. Do you think Arnwright might have beat it already? Mm, I don't know. Oh, hard to say. It's been a long day. I hope it doesn't get any longer. Yeah. How long? Yeah. Okay. Turn off the light, man. Carga says a yellow Merc's been circling the block, thinks it's on right driving. Better get your car warmed up. You might not stop. Right. Quine. Quine. Yeah, but... Noticed a yellow Mercury circling the block? Yeah, that him? Think so. Here it comes again. Now get down. Yeah, he spotted us. Matt, bring it around. Fine. Call Asher to block the boulevard. Right. 
Let's go, Matt. 13J, code three, suspect proceeding west on Kenilworth. Yellow Mercury sedan, license number 80, Robert 1135. Over. KQAR. Attention all units in area G for George. Code three, suspect proceeding west on Kenilworth. Yellow Mercury sedan, 80, Robert 1135. He's going into the park. 13J, suspect heading for the park. KQRA, code three, suspect heading toward park area. Asher's ahead of him. He's got the street block. Hey, he isn't going to stop. He's trying to go around Asher's car. There he goes. Shoot in the air, Matt. Okay, let him have it. Yeah, that did it. He's down. Watch it now. He's had it, Ben. Yeah. You get him all right, Ben? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. My car's a mess. I guess so. I better call in Asher. Right. Well, that's that. It's been a long one, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Nick still body? Yeah. Quine around? Back at the house. I guess I'll let him try. Just this once. The lineup. Where before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen next Thursday when we again bring you The Lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number of their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications... The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Greb was written by E. Jack Newman with music composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Jeanette Nolan, Harry Lang, Howard McNear, Peter Leeds, Lee Patrick, and Virginia Gregg. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Beginning next week, listen for the lineup Thursday nights on most of these same stations. And at this time on Wednesdays, be sure to be on hand for the hectic arrival of the Red Skelton Show. To say it with music, CBS, CBS, the star's address, the star's address, where you always hear the best at CBS, CBS, the star's address, the star's address, CBS, CBS, the star's address. Stay tuned now for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. Dan Coverly speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.